Hi everyone and welcome to this lecture on relay fundamentals. We touched on relays very briefly when we were talking about electromagnets, but now we're going to get further into it and I've even got this little relay board here that we can have a look at. Um, I've taken some photos, I've ripped one of them apart because there's two relays on this board, and then um, we can have a look at the photos and, and point to things and figure out exactly what's going on. So, I've written a few things here. Relays are special switches that allow us to control a very large amount of current with a very small amount of current. So let's think about the problem and then why they came up with relays to kind of solve this problem. So we've got a circuit here, 12 volt power supply. So think of this in your car. This is connected to a motor and then we have a switch. So the motor in this case is the starter motor. So you know when you jump in the car, you turn the ignition, you hear the starter motor um, energize, which then turns your motor to start the car. Um, now these starter motors, they, I mean, it's pretty hard to start a car. Um, we need a lot of current to go through the wires within that motor to turn that motor to, to be able to actually start the car. Now it could be in the order, or it is generally in the order of hundreds of amps. So if we do this calculation right here to see how much current is going to flow, IT equals the 12 volt power supply. In this case, the motor has a resistance of 0.024 very very tiny amount of resistance so what do you think that's going to do to the current so 12 divided by 0.024 ohms 500 amps so when we close that switch 500 amps of current um, is going to be flowing through there so it says here we need a big switch and thick wires to handle 500 amps not something that you really want uh, to wire up in your car's dash. So in the dash, as you flick that um, switch, which is in the where you put the key, that switch would have to be huge to be able to handle 500 amps. Um, just to put it into perspective, here's one of these switches that we looked at in another lecture. This one has rated on it 6 amps. So this little guy here can only handle 6, yet we need 500. We need a switch to be able to fi handle 500 amps to start our car. So our problem is... We need a lot of current, which means we need a really big switch, but we don't want to put a big switch um, in our dash. We want small switches like this sort of thing. So how can we fix it? Well, the answer is to use some sort of a relay. So how do relays work? <clears throat> well, relays have two sections. The first section is the low power, uh, low current section, and that's where the coil of wire is. So what happens here is, let me just get a different color when we connect this switch here we're going to have current flowing through there and in fact I'm pretty sure it's this relay that I measured see how I've got 68 ohms there I actually measured the resistance of the coil of wire in there and it came up as 68 ohms so when we flick that switch we're gonna go 12 volts divided by 68 ohms and what will we get for that 12 volts divided by 68 ohms so 0 0.176, so if we view that in engineering notation, ooh, which it is, sorry my calculator is messing up, that's going to be 176 milliamps. That is a tiny amount of current. A switch this size can handle 6 amps. This switch would have no problem handling that much current. So what happens when we actually do that? Well, when we put current flow through a coil of wire, we get a magnetic field built up around it that magnetic field is going to have an influence on this here which we call the armature. The armature is the moving part of the um, of the relay. Now notice how I've drawn really thick wires here and really thick electrical contacts. Well that's because these this part of the relay is designed to handle a lot of current whereas this side very thin wires not much current um, and we can have a very small switch. So when this energizes it actually pulls down on this big bit of metal. When it pulls down on that bit of metal, in fact I'll show you down here what happens, it gets this and it pulls down due to that magnetic field. When it pulls down on that, notice how we've made an electrical contact down here. Now that we've got an electrical contact down there, uh, let's go light blue, we will have electrons flowing through here, flowing through there, around to the positive. And that's where we're going to get our 500 amps. So this section down here, 
or this section here, which is the same section, they cannot handle 500 amps. The wires are too thin, the switch is too small, um, it's, it'll just end up burning the whole thing out. What we need is for something to handle 500 amps, we need a really big switch with really thick wires to be able to handle that. So, so that we don't have to have a huge switch in the, in the dash, like you know those crazy mad scientists switches where you, you flick it down, the knife switches, so that we don't have to have one of those inside our car dash, we use a relay. We have a very small switch. As you flick that switch, it has a very small amount of current that goes through a coil of wire. It energizes the coil, which means we now get a magnetic field around the coil. That magnetic field then pulls down on this bit of metal, um, so it overcomes the spring tension. In fact, I could lift that up just a little bit. Um, no, I can't, because that's being annoying. There we go. Let's just do that. So it pulls down, um, oh, un, oh, overcomes that spring tension, pulls it down, makes an electrical contact with big bits of metal with thick wires to be able to handle the current. So that's what we use relays for. Oops, come back here. Here's a, a simple schematic diagram of a relay. So it's just a box, as you can see here. Um, it shows you the coil side, so that's where you would connect up your power supply. Once you connect the power supply, you get a small amount of current going through there, going through this way. But that then energizes the relay, and then on the other side, it causes the, um, the switch or the, the armature to flick positions. Now, a lot of relays ha actually have two connections. We call these the normally open connection and the normally closed, kind of like we had with one of these switches. Um, or the push buttons rather. So we had those two different types of push buttons when you you had the normally open one, which means when you press it, uh, sorry, when you don't press it, the contacts are not connected. When you do press it, they are connected. When we talk about the normally closed push button, when you don't press it, it's already connected. It's when you do press it that it disconnects. Same sort of thing with a relay, but we have the two of those in one. We have the common connection, and that would normally be connected, so when this is not connected to a power supply, that switch there is always connected to the normally closed position. So if you were to measure resistance between there and there, you'd get about zero ohms. But at the same time, if you measured between there and there, you would get the OL, out of limits, open circuit, uh, infinite ohms coming up over there. It is not connected. But when we actually connect up this, like that, we energize that, that then connects that armature switch up to here now. So we can we completely swap what's going on. Now the normally open contact is connected to common, whereas the normally closed is disconnected. When you disconnect the power supply over here, it just switches back because of um, spring, uh, spring tension. Um, now, I have been saying spring tension is the way that it gets back there. Sometimes they use magnets to get it back there. So normally there's these magnets that attract to the normally closed position. It's not until the electromagnet overcomes that and pulls it down to the other position that it will swap. So what about a bit of an example? Uh, wait, no, that's coming next. So let's have a look at the internal workings of one of these things. So remember this particular board, um, it also has protection circuitry on here, which we don't need to go through but it has two relays, this one and this one. It's just that I've ripped this one apart. So this is the one that I ripped apart, relay number two. If we have a bit of a look in here, you can see there's the coil that I was talking about. And that coil, you can see one of the wires coming across here to this post, which then comes through the circuit board and gets soldered on down there. So that's one of the inputs of the coil. If we were to be able to look around the other side, we'd have another similar wire coming off there and that gets soldered over here to the other side of the circuit board. So that's where we would connect our power supply to to actually energize that coil. Once that coil is energized, let's just make this a bit bigger, we get a magnetic field build up around there. That magnetic field, if you have a look here, this is our big metal contact coming over here. Maybe I should get a different color so we can see that. Ugh. Let's try another color. Uh, light blue seems to be all right. So there's our big metal contact there. That metal contact comes through inside this little arch um, up there. Now normally, see there's a little bit of silver there. That's a little magnet. And then this other bit of silver here is the part that connects to this. 
So when that is not energized, the, this is actually pulled up by the magnet. And also this is a little bit springy as well. It's a bit springy, which forces it to go up a bit. So that, that connection there is normally connected to the top connection when the relay is not energized. There's another little silver bit down here and notice how there's a bit of a black gap there. That means that this, this connection is not connected to that. However, hopefully you can see what's gonna happen if we were to apply a power supply to this coil of wire, we energize the coil, so we get a magnetic field built up around there and that is going to pull down on this bit of metal. As it pulls down, we actually get that connected to here now and it disconnects from the top one. And then we have three connections over here which goes uh, to those three. So for example, if we were to connect a wire to that, that center one, that would then come through the circuit board to connect to here. And then if we wanted to connect to this top connection there, we'd have a wire going in there. And if we wanted to connect to that bottom connection, we have a wire going in there. So that's how we can actually connect up to these three different things. So how about a practical example of one of these? So here's my practical example. Television on off circuit. So you may notice with television that, that um, when the television screen itself is off, there's a standby light that is on. But when you turn the television on, the standby light turns off and the screen turns on. So we can use a relay for that sort of thing. So let's say that, say that the, the television is off. So here it is, screen off. With the screen off, the television switch would be open, so it's turned off. So with that switch open like that, we have no uh, magnetic field around this relay. With no magnetic field there, under spring tension, we're pulling this center common contact down to the normally closed position. If we follow the circuit through here, what we're doing is we've got negative connected over here to the, the right-hand side of the standby light. And with that switch in that position, we've completed the circuit for that light, connecting the positive to the other side, so that light turns on. But notice what's happening with the television screen itself. Even though it's connected to the negative of the power supply, it doesn't actually have the complete circuit to the positive. Therefore, it's turned off. But if we were to close that switch, we now have all these electrons traveling through here, which energizes that coil, which means a magnetic field is built up around that coil. That then causes this armature, so the switch, to change from this position, the normally closed position, to the normally open position up here. What's that going to do to the light? Well, the light is still connected to the negative over here. However, we don't have that complete circuit to positive anymore. So that is off. What's going to happen with the television? Well, we already had that negative connection going on. And now that this is flicked to here, we now have a complete circuit through to the positive. Television's on and we can watch all those crazy programs. Um, well, I'm pretty sure that is it. Yes, that is it for relays. So remember, we had a problem where um, in order to be able to switch lots of current, we would have had to have physically huge switches to be able to do that. Um, some, I guess some safety implications of that is if you're going to be the one actually flicking one of those switches, you're going to be uh, exposed to quite a hazard where, where you know a lot of current is going to be flowing through there, which can end up killing you. So it's safer to have a really, really small switch. And when you flick that, a very, very small amount of current will flow. And then that signal then goes off to the relay. That relay then takes care of the, the pretty dangerous task of switching in a lot of current. Uh, we found out that the internal workings of a relay, there's normally two contacts, a normally closed con contact, which means the center connection is normally connected to that one. When we energize it, it swaps from that one and goes to the normally open connection. And then we went through this uh, practical example. Um, all right, well, that's it for that part for now. So what we'll do now is I'll show you a quick little video of how this is actually working when we apply power, and that'll be it for our relays. Thank you, guys. All right, guys, so I really wanted to show you a practical demonstration of a relay in operation. What I've actually got here is a two-relay module, which means it's got one relay, which I have hacked to pieces, and a second relay over here, which I have not touched. So it's looking good. Now, they're both rated at 10 amps. So you can go up to 125 volts AC or 28 volts DC, 30 volts DC, no matter which one you're using, it still works with um, up to 10 amps, which is fine. Now the basic uh, run through of this is there's five connections for each one of these. If we turn it over and just try and follow these five, just grab this pen here to try and help out a little bit more. And then I'll try and figure out where my pen is. There it is. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen
two, three, four, five for that one, and one, two, three, four, five for this one. So basically the way this works is this and this, this is your input to the coil, this is your common connection, and then that common connection, depending on if the coil here is energized or not, that common connection will either connect to there or it will connect up to there like that, and that's that's all it's doing. Now this one looks a little complicated because it's got all this extra circuitry here, but we don't need to worry about that, especially not for this demonstration. It's just a whole heap of protection circuitry, and that's it. We can get rid of all that, and this relay would operate the same. We just wouldn't have that extra protection um, for our circuit there. Now I've got it connected up to the power supply, ground, zero volts, VCC, which is, um, we'll learn about VCC when we get to transistors, but that in this case just means five volts. So between ground and VCC, is um, there's our five volt connection. We then have in one and in two. That's basically input to the first relay one and input to the, the second relay two. So I've got that connected to a button right here. So every time I press this button, it actually completes a circuit to energize the relay. Now pay attention to what's happening to this little armature. Every time I press it, it energizes the relay, which means that coil of wire there has current flowing through it. When there's current flowing through that relay coil, it generates a magnetic field. When it generates a magnetic field, it pulls down on this, and I can even switch it just with my finger there like that. Have a look what's happening over here though. Notice how we've got down in here, if I can focus on that just a little bit. Okay, this, this connection here, see how it can move up and down. Normally it's connected to this top connection, that's the normally closed. When I press this button to energize the relay, watch what happens. It goes down to the bottom and opens circuits the top. So normally closed, we're not pressing this button, it's um, connected to the top connection, you press the button, it energizes the relay coil and it pulls it down to the bottom. So it's just flicking from one to the other. When we connect it to our external circuit, we've got these three connections with which to do that. There's our center connection there. That's the common, and normally it's connected to this bottom connection. However, when we energize the relay, that middle connection now connects to the top connection and disconnects from there. So it either goes to the top connection or the bottom, that's all it does. And we can do it with up to 10 amps of current. So that's our, um, that's our relay operating there. Now let's just have a look at it with some LEDs connected to here just so we can see what happens in an actual circuit. Okay, so I've got this circuit completed. I've now got the plus 5 volt power supply connection going to the common terminal, which means it's connected to this part here. And then in the normally closed position, that 5 volts connects to this LED light, so it's always on. And then when we press the button, it energizes the relay it changes that connection from the bottom to the top, so now that plus five volts goes to this other LED. So let's press the button, and you'll find it just swaps. It disconnects the red LED from the five volt connection and connects up the blue LED. By the way, I can't remember if I've said this, but an LED is a light emitting diode, and that'll be covered in the diode um, section at another time. Now, to see that this works without even energizing it, when you open up the relay, you can just push down on this, and you're doing effectively the same sort of thing. Now I think I have damaged it a bit because that red one's not coming on <laughs> anymore. There we go. So you can see it flicks between the two. Now this is a very simplistic example because these guys here, they're only drawing very small amounts of current, but remember we can use this. We can press this button and we might only get 100 milliamps of current flowing, but when we press that we can get up to 10 amps getting connected over here. So a tiny amount of current is able to switch in a very large amount of current. All right, that is it for this uh, lecture. Thank you for watching, guys.